Hi everyone and thank you for joining me for today's adorable tutorial. We are going to be painting a holiday mushroom that you can turn into a holiday or Christmas card or you can just follow along if you want to know how to paint mushrooms in watercolor. Um, but before we get into the tutorial, I just want to quickly mention that I've added a few uh, watercolor Christmas cards uh, digital copies of them onto my Etsy shop. If you've ever watched any of my videos or you benefited from any of them and you want to support uh, an independent artist who has provided hundreds of free tutorials on YouTube, Etsy is one way you can do that. Um, for the price of a Starbucks drink, you can purchase a digital copy of a Christmas card and print it as many times as you'd like and send it to all your friends and family. So as always, I've added the link to my Etsy shop in the description if you want to go take a look at that. Thanks! Uh, so back to the tutorial here. To start out, the first thing I would recommend you doing is sketching your mushrooms out with uh, or using a pencil because then you're not guessing at where to paint things. You can just simply fill in the penciled in shapes that you've drawn. Uh, but you're basically going to paint this lopsided um, triangle shape for the top of your mushroom. You just want to make sure that the bottom portion curves inward ever so slightly because this is where part of the under part of the mushroom is going to be sticking out and it's also where the stem is going to come out of so it's going to make it look a little bit more realistic. In terms of the color of the top portion of your mushroom, I'm going for one of those classic red and white spotty poisonous mushrooms. So I'm obviously using red watercolor here and it fades ever so slightly into a yellow color towards um, the edges of the mushroom top. Uh, I'm not sure why this, I just looked up pictures of these mushrooms and some of them had yellow on the side so I thought I'd add a little bit diversity to the mushrooms and add the yellow, but you can even kind of use this dabbing motion with your paintbrush to um, add little spots of red on the top and you want to do this while it is still wet so it will allow the pigment to kind of bleed and blend into the background and make it look a little bit more realistic and you want to replicate the same thing with the smaller mushroom uh, and once both of those tops have completely dried. You, you want to make sure they are completely dry, otherwise the red will bleed into the bottom portion and you want to avoid that. You're going to take a very light washed out yellow tone and just paint the under part of both mushroom heads. And for the smaller mushroom that I painted, I made the under part of the mushroom much more visible. So here I'm just adding some shade to the part that is closest to the red part because this makes it look like there's a shadow there and again just adds another level of realism. Um, you know, just looks nicer that way. But I made sure to leave the portion where my stem is uh, connecting to the mushroom. I made, I made sure to leave that white because we want there to be a distinction between the stem and the underside of the mushroom. By the way, if you're interested in any of the tools that I'm using, I've linked um, the paintbrushes and the paints and the paper that I use in the description as always. So. If, uh, if you're looking for new tools, I highly rec recommend the paintbrushes that I use. I love the Grumbacher collection and the Windsor & Newton si size quadruple zero that I use is probably the best detail brush that I've ever tried. So um, I vouch for these brushes. Anyways, you want to continue with your stems here, making sure to keep one side of your stem a little bit darker. This just makes the stem actually look 3D rather than flat because it looks like there is light reflecting off one side and um, there's a shadow on the other side. And just make sure that you make the shadowed portion on the same side for both uh, mushrooms, otherwise it will look a bit strange if um, it'll look like the sun is coming from two different sides. 
Once the bases of your mushrooms have completely dried, you can add another layer um, of the red on top if you want to make it even darker. I wasn't really happy with my pigment with the opacity so I just added another layer of red and then you want to using this flick, flicking motion um, create the grass blades at the base of your two mushrooms using a couple of different shades or hues of green uh, you can wait for it to dry and then add another layer if you'd like but just use a nice thin brush here so the ends of your flicks are really thin and they look like realistic um, grass blades. Now what you can also do here is turn this into a Christmas card. Um, so you can paint some pine branches in the corners like I'm doing here by simply creating a thin line and then um, flicking out these very very thin hairs coming off of the original branches that you painted. I've actually uh, painted several paintings like this recently so if you want a slower or a slowed down version of the technique on how to paint these pine branches then I encourage you to check out some of my previous videos. You can also add a Christmas greeting here I wrote happy holidays if you are turning into turning this into a card I just encourage you to sketch it out with pencil first so that you don't make any spelling mistakes. And then once the heads of your mushrooms have completely dried, you can take either white watercolor, white ink, or white acrylic paint and just dab these very irregular spots on the tops of your mushrooms to make them look like those poisonous mushrooms that I was talking about at the beginning. And that's about it. Again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out my Etsy shop and I hope you guys are excited for all the Christmas tutorials that I have coming your way.